Well hello Internet and welcome to my Django tutorial. In this part of the tutorial I'm going to show you how to install as well as how to get a Django server up and running and this is going to be a multi-part tutorial because there's going to be a lot to cover and I'm going to cover a lot. Now if you don't know what Django is, it is a Python based web framework that's going to allow you to quickly create web applications without all of the installation or dependency problems that you normally will find with other frameworks. Some of the positives to it, it is very easy to switch databases, it has a built-in admin interface, forms are very easy to work with, it is a fully functional framework that requires nothing else, however if you would like additional functionality there are thousands of additional packages available to you and it is very scalable. In the description underneath the video I have step-by-step -step how to install Django in Windows as well as on Macintosh and now I'm going to show you how to install it on Windows. If you're on Mac instead just look in the description and you can click to skip ahead to the part of the video where I show that installation. So I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Alright so this is Windows 10 that I have here and of course you're going to need Python so if you want to check to see if you have Python hopefully you've been watching my learn to program series which this is a continuation of and in that situation you have Python installed but if you want to check anyway what you want to do is you want to open up your command prompt this guy over here and you want to type in Python with a space dash dash version and hopefully you'll see Python 3.4 and it's probably best to keep Python 3.4 specifically on Windows because there are zero problems if you use 3.4 but you can give 3.5 a chance it should work as well as well as any other later versions of Python. If however you do not have Python installed you're going to want to go to python.org and forward slash get it forward slash windows and you're going to want to click on the x86 MSI installer and whenever you do that it's going to install and you're going to click on next a whole bunch of times and agree to a whole bunch of things and then Python will be installed for you. Specifically, Python will more than likely be in your main C directory and it should be in a directory called Python 3.4 like we see right here. And then what you want to want to do is there's an option to automatically have Python added to your path but sometimes that doesn't take for some reason. So what you want to do is go over into your little start window and type in control panel and then click on control panel. Whenever you do, control panel is going to open up and you're going to want to click on system and security. Then after that you're going to want to click on system. Then after that come over to advanced system settings and click on that. This guy's going to pop up. You're going to come down here to environment variables and click on that. And then you are going to come to your path right here and click on edit. And whenever you do, if it properly installed to your path when you installed Python, you're going to see this guy right here. If it did not, you're going to want to come in here and say edit and then put that option in and then hit OK and save it and everything should be working fine now. So we're going to close all of that stuff up and then what you want to do is you want to install pip. So you're just going to go into your command prompt again and type in python m space pip install space dash uppercase u space pip right like that. And if it doesn't come up and say that it's already installed, it is going to install it for you and you will have pip all ready to go. After you have that all set up, what we're going to do is create a Python virtual environment so we don't have to worry about changing dependencies that your system may not want edited. So inside of your command prompt again, you're going to type in pip install virtual environment, just like that, and all of that will be all set up for you. Now you're going to want to come in here and create the virtual environment for your site in your command prompt and to do that again you're going to type in virtual environment with a space and it normally starts off with env. Some people just type in env but I normally type in env with a space and then whatever I want my site to be called and just to keep this simple I typed in site 1 and then you hit enter and that will be set up for you. Now you're going to want to activate the environment in your command prompt and to do that you're going to want to change to your env underscore site or whatever you called it into that specific directory and then I hit dir and you're going to see all of these different guys right here and scripts is where we're going to be going to next. So you're going to want to change directory to scripts 
and then inside of the scripts directory you're going to type in activate and hit enter and you're going to see now we are in a virtual environment that's what this guy rate means right here now what we want to do is go and install Django in your command prompt again and to do so you're just going to type in pip with a space install Django and everything is going to set up for you and then you're going to want to test that it works and to test that it works you're just going to type in python and hit enter and then inside of here whenever these little dashes pop up you're going to want to type in import space django and then django.git underscore version and don't forget the parentheses and whenever you do that you should see 1.10.2 or a number higher than that and if you do that you're going to know that django has been installed so then you can just type in quit with two parentheses just like you see right here to exit out of the python console now what we're going to do is to create a sample site so I'm just going to jump backwards in our directory. So I'm going to type in CD with two dashes like that. And you're going to type in Django-admin, start project, and then whatever you want your site to be called. And if you come down here, you're going to see sample site has been created right there. We are then going to change into the sample site directory. And if you hit DIR inside of there, you're going to see all this stuff pop up inside of here. Now, sample site, which is going to be another directory inside of the sample site directory, is going to be where your project is going to be living. Manage.py is actually going to allow you to interact with your project. And we're going to start the server here in a second with that, and you're going to see exactly how that works. And then if we go into that sample site directory, you're going to see a couple other additional files. We'll get more specifically into these files later on. But basically, this guy right here, this init, is just going to tell Python that this is a Python package. And settings, which is this guy up here, has all the settings for your Django project. URLs.py is sort of a table of contents for your project. And then WSGI.py is going to serve your project. And we'll get into all of these guys in detail pretty much in the next tutorial. So now all you need to do after you have all that set up is to start your server. So you're going to want to jump backwards into the uh, sample site directory we have right here. And specifically, you're looking for manage.py. And to start the server, you're going to type in Python, manage.py, and then run server. And if nothing goes wrong, don't worry about any of these migration things and all that stuff right here. We're just checking to make sure everything is all set up. And if you do so, it's going to tell you the local host. This is localhost 127.0.0.1. That is localhost on every single computer and then you're just going to want to open up your browser to this specific address or you could just type in localhost colon 8000 in your browser and if you do you're going to see it worked and there you go and you can see right here it says localhost colon 8000 all right so that is how to set up Django on Windows and in the next part of the tutorial we'll start creating web applications but now I'm gonna jump over and show you how to set up Django on a Macintosh Alright, so if you are on a Macintosh, chances are you're going to have numerous different versions of Python running inside of this guy. So what we are going to do here is we are going to check our Python version. So you're just going to type in Python dash dash version just like before. And you're going to see here that I have Python 2.7 pops up inside of there. And if you have Python 3 installed, you're instead going to type in Python 3 dash dash version. And if that shows up all perfectly fine, then you don't need to install Python. Otherwise, you're going to have to jump over to the Python site and install it. And you're going to need at least Python 3.4 or Python 5. Now, to be safe, I, I, can, I know for a fact I can use Python 3.5 on a Macintosh without any problem. You can use 3.4 or 3.5, doesn't really matter, but you have to use one or the other. And you're just going to come over here and click on Download. And then you are going to hit Next a whole bunch of times and agree to all kinds of different things. And after you do that, Python will be installed. And you're going to go back into your terminal and you're going to check if pip has been installed or not. And to do so, you're going to type in pip and version right like this and you're going to see that it has been installed and you also should look to see that it is installed with your Python 3.5 which is what we're going to use in this situation or 3.4 depends on whatever you chose to do if pip is not installed or you get an error message what you're going to want to do is install it and it's very easy to install you're just going to type in sudo easy install pip 
and you're gonna hit enter a whole bunch of times and that's going to install I can just do this right here you're going to enter your password da 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 and da 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 so there you go pip has been installed so let's clear that out now what you're going to want to do is type in your terminal to install Django and again you're going to go sudo pip install and this is going to be capital D and Django like this da 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 is da 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 don't worry about any of this stuff because it says the requirement already has been satisfied if it hasn't been you're going to get a completely different message and it's going to say that Django has been installed so now what we need to do is just check that Django has been installed so remember I'm going to be using Python 3 so I'm going to type in Python 3 like this I'm going to say import and I'm going to import Django like that and then I'm going to type in Django git version and you're going to see that it pops back and everything is fine. All right, so you're going to want to look for a number that's like 1.10 or higher, okay? And to get out of the interactive console, you just type in quit like that, and you know that everything has been set up properly. Now, I am going to come in here and create a sample site. So let's see what directory I'm in, and there, that all looks perfectly fine. So let's say that I want to install in this specific directory. You're going to have to change to whatever directory you want to install to. And I want to create a sample site here. So I'm going to go Django-admin start project, and I'll call this sample site. And then I can go ls, and you're now going to see the sample site right there. So I'm going to change into the sample site. Type ls, you're going to see manage.py, and you're also going to see the main directory right here. I can change into my sample site directory and take a look at everything they have right here. Once again, I talked about this in the Windows part of the tutorial, but you didn't see that. What this is going to do is tell Python that this is a Python package. This guy right here is going to have all the settings for our Django project. We'll get more into that later on. This guy is going to be a sort of table of contents for our project, which you will see. And this guy is going to serve our project up for us. Now what I want to do is jump backwards into the previous directory. And I want to go in here and start my server. And to do so, I'm just going to type in Python 3 manage py, which is that guy right there, and run server. And whenever I do, it's going to have a whole bunch of things here. Don't worry about that. Everything should be working fine. I'm going to copy this, which is my local host. Open up my browser, paste this inside of here, and run it. And you can see right there, it worked. Congratulations on your first Django powered page. Okay, so that is how to install on Windows as well as on Macintosh and how to get a server up and running. As the tutorial continues, of course, we will cover much more than that. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.